Good night. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that y'all are doing well. <clears throat> How was your week? I hope that your week was fine. Uh, I am going to start my life with a song. Song that just creates the mood for me. So, because I just want to prepare the atmosphere right now. I just want to prepare the atmosphere. Just prepare the atmosphere for me and you. That we can, that we can receive. That we can receive. Yes, let's just prepare our hearts. And I just want to welcome, I just want to welcome everyone that, that will come in, that will join me, and that will stay to the end. I just want to welcome you. So, let's just prepare our hearts right now. So once again, I hope that y'all had a great week and that this week was filled with joy and peace. Let me just lower this a little bit. That it was filled with Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for bringing us here tonight. Thank you for taking us through another week. Thank you for raising us up to do what you have called us to do, dear Father. Thank you for everything that you have placed our hands to touch that will be exalted, it will be a blessing unto you, dear Father. Everything is only unto you. So we want to thank you. We want to thank you for uh, the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that you have given us, dear Father. Fill this place right now. Fill this place right now. Fill the homes. Last time, Father, we dealt with spiritual house cleaning. I hope that a lot of people got to clean their houses or rid their houses of things that don't deserve to be there. So to fill the house with the Holy Spirit, with the Ruach HaKadosh. Yes, your presence, your presence. Yes, your presence. Yes, worship right now. Worship right now, worship right now. I hope that everything was of a blessing. Your 
fill us there, Father. Thank you again. Thank you again for joining, for joining me. Thank you again for being here with me. Good evening, good evening, Bonsetta. Good evening, I wanna thank you. I pray, dear Father, that you will give me a new revelation. You would bring everything to memory that I need to have to memory everything that I need to know that you would bring it to my remembrance dear father the scripture verses that I need to to have and to remember dear father bring bring them to memory dear father I bless everyone that is in tonight and those that will come in and go out I bless their families. I ask that you will bless their families so that they can raise up their father. All the prodigal sons and daughters that are out there, they will come back their father. I, I, I pray, I pray that their hearts will be touched and they will come back and they will realize that you do exist. You do exist. Look at everything around us, dear Father, and the things that you have saved us from. All the things that you have stopped from happening to us, dear Father. And I, I just want to bind the familiar spirit that will come up and that will watch us and that will monitor us, dear Father. Hide us. Hide us from those familiar spirits. Hide us. Father, Father, yeah, help us to put on our full armor. Our full armor daily. Help us to take up the sword of the Spirit. And at least read a chapter of your word a day so that it could go into our spirits, dear Father. Because we know that the enemy roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour, but he will not devour us, dear Father because we are hidden we are hidden under your wings and we are your children their father you you have anointed us you have given us all the tools that we need to do the things that we need to do their father I want to thank you, Father. I want to thank you for giving us the spirit of discernment so that we are the discerning spirit, so that we can be able to discern the, the, the evils that we need to discern. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Inter thank you for that. Thank you for that. We have to realize Thank you for, for, for watching over us, dear Father. Thank you for everything that you have given us. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your prosperity. Thank you for warding off all those evils that will come up against us, dear Father. We pray right now for the spirit of infirmity that will plague our bodies, that will come up against our bodies, dear Father. We pray that these things will be bind up and sent to the pits of hell or to the abyss where they belong. They don't belong in our bodies because this body is a temple, is your temple. So I pray right now that everything that will come from my lips tonight will only be what you want to come from my lips, dear Father. Father, yeah, I pray. I pray. I pray for your anointing. Thank you for that anointing. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. Thank you for everything that you have given us. Thank you for bringing us through this week. Thank you for waking us up this morning. And if there are any, 
any TV shows or any things that we are reading or anything that is going into our spirits that you don't want to be there. Help us to feel that uneasiness and that nudging that will tell us, no, this is not right. I pray right now for those of you that are in and I pray anointing upon you. Let your anointing shine wherever you go. Let your light shine wherever you go. Because the word says that we're the salt of this, of this earth. And if the salt loses its saltiness, what good is it? We're the light of the earth. We can let our light shine wherever you plant us there, Father. You could plant us in the middle of, of, you know, in the middle of the greatest evils. But our light will still shine because it will be so bright. It will be difficult for people not to see that light. Thank you again. Thank you again. Help us to put on the helmet of salvation and have the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth and the shoes of peace, dear Father. Help us to put on these things. You said you give us the authority. So now we are walking in this authority. You told us in Ephesians 6 that we don't f battle with human beings, but be battle with the spirits out there. So help us to be able to fight and to be able to battle with these spirits. Give us truth. Give us truth daily because there's so many false prophets out there, but give us truth. Help us to see the truth. And if we are watching anybody that claim to be a prophet of, 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 yeah, prophet of you. And they're just false prophets giving us false information and prosperity information. Yes, we all want prosperity. But you said to delight yourself, to delight ourselves in you. And you will give us the desires of our heart. So I want to thank you right now. I want to thank you. I want to thank you that everything that is said tonight will be of only a blessing to you. In Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name, I pray. And I pray. Hallelujah. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening once again. And... For those of you who are in, I want to welcome you. And for those of you that will be coming in later, I want to welcome you. All right. Yes. Um, so. Yes, so good night, good night, good night, one second, my faithful one. But you're going to be the one to carry on the torch for me. So I want to thank you and I want to welcome you once again. And I pray that, you know, your week was well. And, um, you know, if there's anything that tonight, do anything that you want to say to me, just say, it. just say it because we are always here. And I am assuming that all is well. You can see me, you can hear me well because you're talking to me. So 
we dealt with, do you think that we'll be able to get this on the uh, hour and a half this time, or at least an hour and a half, or just over? Because we dealt with good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that you're well, because blessings are upon you. And, um, well, we dealt with uh, a lot of topics. We dealt with, well, I dealt with, I don't think you were coming on yet, though, Von Zetta, but I dealt with abuse, um, the different forms of abuse, and how to identify them. If, you know, if somebody would like us to go over those things, maybe at a later date, then just let me know. But I dealt with, we dealt with the familiar spirit. We dealt with, I can't even remember, so many things that we dealt with in spiritual warfare. Because, as I say, it's okay to want to have prosperity and want to have all those things because we all want those things, but we need to know how to fight the battle that the Most High wants us to fight. So the reason I go towards this way is that that's the way that the Holy Spirit leads me. That's the way that Yeshua leads me to go. And that's why I go more in this form. But if, you know, the Lord permits, next week when we come back, I want to be on a little lighter note because I want us to not only deal with the curses and the generational curses, but I want us to deal now with the generational blessings, the blessings that we can have if we just obey, you know, all those different blessings. So I don't want to be like, seeming as though I know in real deep subjects all the time. So I want to welcome you once again. And for those of you that don't know me, I am Annie. And my channels are normally Sweet Annie's. Um, that's the brand name, Sweet Annie's. And as I always say in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show yourself approved unto, yeah, God, a workmanship that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right? So we have to study to show ourselves approved. And I find for me what I normally do, because sometimes you are so busy what I normally do is to get in my um, Bible reading or whatever, like during my break, that's what I, you know, during my break, instead of looking at certain things, because later this month too, I would like us to do a fast, um, but instead of, you know, looking at other things, what I would try to do is to read my word, read certain things in the word, because sometimes, you know, I know how life gets. So today, I wanted us to look at the Jezebel spirit. And I'm not sure how much of you know what the Jezebel spirit is or or who Jezebel evil is, but the thing about it is that we call it the Jezebel spirit because there really was a person in the Old Testament by the name of Jezebel. And she was, she, well, she called herself a prophetess, but she was a very evil queen evil queen so i can give you a little um 
spray C on it because um, okay a hab right all right let me see first of all let's look here Jezebel right she was a princess in the ninth century who married Ahab um, the prince of Israel but you know we all know that in the Old Testament the Mosai tells us or tell, told the children of Israel do not marry from certain um, races because when you marry from those races if they um, serve other gods therefore you will do the same you will you know get involved in the same thing if they're serving Baal you will get involved in the same thing because a lot of the times we go because just look at it we are like I'm here you know in the USA and there are a lot of things in the USA that are different from where it came from in Barbados but because of me being here you know there are certain things that you do and you have to buy by and, and all those things so I just wanted to you know I just wanted to let y'all know a little bit about the you know the history of of Jezebel because but what we can do is we can probably we can probably look at the word because we can look at first Kings 16 and I as I said I am not going to be too long tonight well I say that all the time but but for truth for truth this time I'm trying I'm going to try not to keep you all too long and I am going to ask the Lord blessings upon the reading of this word and once again I hope that everything that comes from my lips will be only what the Most High wants me to talk about so we are going to just look at that scripture verse and I know that sometimes when you are doing things like this that you get more attacks you get um, you would get attacking your body you get attack in your finances you get attack in your in everything because I you know I have an old car I haven't bought I, I you know my car is 20 years old it was basically given to me and I am looking now to change it because it is on its last leg and it is costing me a lot of money and Friday last week this is just a short testimony Friday last week and I sure that y'all all of y'all can attest to this Friday last week I receive an extra five hundred dollars in my hand that I never even really thought that I was going to get and I received this extra five hundred and that was Friday when I was coming up from work my gas my engine, engine light came on so I was going to pass by the bank but the most I the Holy Spirit told me don't pass by the bank first you know go straight to your mechanic and see what's happening when I got to the mechanic the mechanic I told him the check engine light came on and 
he, you know, um, did whatever he had to do to look to see why it came on. But then he opened the hood and water was everywhere. My radiator was just spouting water. It was just spouting water. So water was everywhere. And when I tell you spouted water because it rust out so much, it was, when they checked it, the water was just pouring through. It was not even dripping. And to fix that, it costed me $511. So that extra $500 that I would have gotten or that could have gone to do something else. I had to take it and spend it in the car. Within within a year, I spent so much money in that car. So I really don't want to put any more money in it. And um, I am going to, that was just, I'm just showing you how when we are involved in certain topics and certain things, I know a lot of people don't like to get involved in spiritual warfare because of that, because of the attacks, because of the fear of being involved in, in this whole thing. But it's just like Jonah, when, you know, when you, you called Jonah, and Jonah ran from his calling. So I just wanted to share that little testimony with you. And, you know, I sometimes you just can't keep running. You can't keep running. You got to do what the Mosai has asked you to do, whether, you know, because all we can do is plant a seed. But at the end of the day, the only person that waters you know, the only person that helps that seed to grow and waters it is the Mosite. So we can just plant a seed. So I just wanted to sh share that little thing with you. But we are going to look at 1 Kings 16.31. And it says here, and it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of of Jehovah, son of Nebat, that he took a wife, Jezebel, the daughter of Eth Ethbal. But you see how you see I this is one thing that that, that strike out to me when I was reading this scripture, now we call, we call, um, they're calling here that they're worshiping Baal. They're worshiping Baal. And his name, right, he was the daughter, but his name has Baal in it. And you know, it, it just strikes out something to me because the word says that when Yahshua was speaking, he says, I am in my father's name. He is, you know, Yahuwah, the father is Yahuwah and he is Yahuwah Shai. So when you know when we look at these things, when he says he is in his father's name, I look at this and I see that her father had the name of Bel in it. Right? And he was the king of the Sidonians. And he went to serve Baal and worship him. All right. So we know, we know from hearing it and from everything 
that you know bill what bill is that is the false god that is one of their gods and this is just to, these scripture verses are just to give you a little bit of history of the person Jezebel that we are dealing with but but although Jezebel is long dead and gone her spirit still lingers on the earth because she was she was you know a very very wicked 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 queen and when you read um, a lot of the when she had the when she had the um, people killed. Uh, let me, let, you know, let's let's look at because you know me, I never like to like. I like y'all to see certain things. Although this is what takes up a lot of the time. <laughs> But I like y'all to see certain things. All right. And it is, well, we're still in First Kings, but we're looking at 18. We're looking at 18.4 this time. And it says, so it was while Jezebel massacred, because that's what I was telling you. She massacred the prophets of the Lord um, that... Obadiah had taken 100 prophets and hidden them, 50 to a cave, and, um, and had fed them with bread and water. But that's what I was talking about, you know, she killed, she killed the prophets. So we, you know, we looking at this and we seeing what, uh, wicked person she was and when we talk about the um when we talk about i have some notes i print them out this time because sometimes it's difficult and i don't don't want to like forget certain things so anyway um right right so she was, she was that evil, evil queen. And when Ahab married her, you know, I, I haven't dealt with this yet, but we will deal with soul ties as well. When he married her, now his soul became tied with her. And she used to do some evil things in the back of the thing when, you know, Ahab wanted the property that was next to him that was owned by Neboah. He wanted this property and because Neboah said, Neboah said, you know, I really can't sell you this property. I really can't because just look at it. You know, a lot of the times we don't want to get rid of things because they they were passed down they were uh, all kinds of things so nebo said well it was passed down you know my yeah my father gave me this property so i really don't want to sell it and ahab went run into jezebel upset and all kinds of stuff like that and say she said but are you the king you are the king so can't you just give an order and and you know and whatever but he wanted ahab wanted this property because it was next to his so he wanted like a bigger section and because because um because this was not soul be, because um, he would not sell the property. Hi, Debbie, if you're still there, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're still on, um, I 
expect to get things through wicked deeds is you know that is wicked that is wicked that is like us you know trying to get something saying oh you want you want the lord to give you something but be, because you are impatient and because you don't want to wait on the lord you just you know you are, uh, yeah, you just, <clears throat> you just, just decide to do it on your own, you know. So, what we, I was just given that little backstory to show you, um, and I don't want to go too much into the backstory because I just wanted to show you what kind of spirit we are dealing with. We are dealing with, uh, constructive controlling spirit so i just give all of that little story to let you know the type of spirit that we're dealing with um you know i saw i saw chrissy came in earlier but she probably went back out um but let's look at it jezebel no just look at let's look at it in in real lifetime now we we belong to churches or, or most of us belong to churches and a lot of times we have to realize that the enemy sends people in the church to cause destruction to cause to cause um, animosity to cause rifts to cause whatever you choose to call it he sends people in the church to cause these things and there are certain characteristics of the Jezebel spirit that you can see they and 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 a lot of the times I pray I pray that that is not in me because a lot of times we don't even know sometimes when we are carrying these spirits we really don't know so they have they're controlling spirits they're controlling they want to control things and they try to they try to exactly there 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 is and and that's what i said just now they are in the churches and they're in the churches really rampant because you will find that they will go to the church and they don't some people don't want to talk to a little little man like me or a little man like like you they wanna they wanna um see how fast they could get up to the pastor or somebody in head because you would see that a lot of the times exactly you know and and as i said i have i have experienced them too and in experiencing it is when you could talk about it because a lot of people out there they will look at this this title and they will say that jezebel spirit I don't want to hear nothing about Jezebel Spirit because these kind of topics that I that I talk about, but this is what I feel that I need to share. These kind of topics that I talk about, a lot of people don't wanna don't wanna hear, don't wanna listen to, they wanna hear things, they wanna hear feel good, feel good things and things that are saying Oh, you're going to get a hundred dollars. You're going to get a million dollars. You're going to get this. You're going to get that. Yes, we will get that because, because the Lord wants us to get those things because he does not want, because he wants to bless us so that we can bless other people. That's what he wants us to bless. He wants to bless us by a lot of people get their blessings but what do they do they hoard it they keep it in the self they don't they don't bless the poor and the lord says he wants us to help the poor and the widowers 
you know, he wants us to help me pour the withers. So that's why I, I do the topics that I do because, you know, I, I, I'm not following the trend of everybody else. So there's so a lot of people are not going to want to hear, um, a lot of people are not going to, exactly. A lot of people are not going to want to hear what I have to say. But if they only sit down sometimes and listen and see, you know, I might not bring it over like how a pastor would bring it over shouting and bawling and, you know, and, and nothing wrong with that because that's their way. But I might not bring it over like that because that's not me. You know, that is, that is not my way. I have my way. And, um, and just like the song says, you know, my way. And, and they, and, and a lot of them just want, and they don't want the truth. So they wouldn't, a life like this would not, would not be enticing to a lot of people. But that's okay. Because even if, you know, what I always say, and I say this a lot, where two or three are gathered, he is in the midst because that's okay. Because behind the scenes, there is somebody watching. Behind the scenes, there is somebody watching and that person might go forward um, from some little thing that I might say and touch millions touch millions, I might only touch two, or I might touch millions. But and another thing that uh, Jezebel hates, right, because we talk about them being planted in the churches, but they really hate spiritual warfare because their um, their thing is to tear down, their thing is to tear down homes because you would think that it might only be in the churches, but is in businesses, is in homes, and and we have to we have to look out for these things because I thought about cleaning your house with physical things and all kinds of things, but and then we also talked about cleaning the house spiritually, but but the the thing that we have to look out for too is that the Jezebel spirit is a very subtle spirit so it moves in in a very subtle way you don't even realize and and, and you know um it, it it reminds me of what the word says the word says and the serpent was very crafty and the serpent said did God really say that, um, you know, that you will die? No, you will not die. Your eyes will be open and you will be like God's. And, and, and that reminds me of what is happening now because a lot of people are thinking that they're their own God because we don't understand it anymore. We can't, you know, we can't see him. We just believe in, in a, a myth or a, a whatever people would choose to call it. But when you look around you and you see, and, and you see how he protects you and you see how he sends his angels to, 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 to shun you from getting into a car accident to, you know, to protect you in every way. When you see these things, how can you say within yourself, with all consciousness, because a lot of people say, oh, I'm a believer. I, no, they don't say I'm a believer. Say I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But what is your fruit saying? What is your fruit saying? So every day I ask the Lord to touch my heart, touch my heart and fill me with your Holy Spirit because 
when you fill me with your Holy Spirit, let my light shine. Let my light shine. I don't just want to say that I'm a believer and that my life is like the world. I I get to the point no, I can't even I can't even watch movies on the on the television because it just bothers my spirit because every movie now is the same theme and it just bothers my spirit. So the point, so so the, the 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 Jezebel spirit is a very crafty spirit. It's a very subtle spirit. They come into the church, they sit down for a little while, but they cause confusion, confusion in the churches because you know they come in the church and they start talking about the pastor. They start criticizing the pastor. They have no respect for the pastor, any kind of authority, they have no respect. And, and, um, and they would start, but, but yet they would be, but they're telling you these things to put seeds and doubt and, you know, all kinds of things in your mind, in your, because they think it's to cause confusion and the Jezebel spirit you know causes confusion not in not only in the churches but in the um, the homes you will find that I said this before you would find that Confusion a lot of the times comes in a lot of people's homes on Sundays. I don't even I don't even know why. I don't even know because that is a day that is that is another topic in itself because we all know that that is not the Sabbath. But um, but this. Sunday, you will find that there will be like so much confusion in your home, and you're wondering. Um, so you know, all I did was get up this morning. You know, that's all I did, just get up. But that's all you have to do. You just have to open your eyes and wake up, and you are in this spiritual war. And. And I talk about this spiritual war all the time, and that's why, and that's why, as I say, I deal these deal with these topics because I want the children of the Most High to know how to survive in this war, because otherwise you will become a casualty of the war, because you cannot go into the war without your battle gear. You cannot go into the war without your armor because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against the principalities and the, you know, and, and when we go into this battle to fight the Jezebel spirit, not only in, in, in what we see around us, but in ourselves, because sometimes we might have traits of the Jezebel spirit and we don't even know and um, so the the only way we can fight that is you know to put on to put on our full armor and be and not only that but be be charged be charged with the word be charged with the word because at the end of the day, the word, because the, you know, the word says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And any tongue that rise up against me in judgment shall be condemned. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. And yeah, through the pulling down of strongholds. So that is why. A lot of times that is why I have a passion 
to deal with these kind of topics because I do not want our people to be casualties of war. I want us to be able to pick up the sword and it would not be too heavy because sometimes we pick up the sword and it might be too heavy and we can't even swing it. So I want us to be able to pick up the sword and be able to fight, fight. Because we have, look at, look at what it says in Daniel 10. You know, the, the, the angel said, you know, we heard your prayers. We heard your prayers, but we had to fight through, you know, we had to fight through to be able to, you know, and then we had, and, and, and not only had to fight through, but we had to stand it for reinforcements. You know, because we had to get help to be able to bring back your um, your answer to answer your prayer. You know, so we as, um, you know, it's just sometimes it's just sad because I recently started you know, I recently started going to a very, uh, very small church here. It's small now. But as I saw today in the spirit that this church is going to be a beacon that is going to shine bright from the tallest mountain. And we are going to have, you know, and, and we are going to have people come into that church that will be yeah, um, a tower of strength, a tower of strength. And, and I, I watch, I watch that my pastor, because I used to go, to, I used to go to another church for, you know, like three years when I was here. But then before that, I used to go to, um, and, you know, I love, I love, I love the church. I love, I, you know, I love the people. I love all those things. But sometimes the Mosa is called you to, for different. Sometimes you are called out and you don't even understand why you are called out. And I just realized, you know, that I couldn't be there right now anymore but it doesn't mean that I don't love the people I don't you know love the church and all that but sometimes and and all of us probably go through this all of us probably go through this where we um, are called like there is a different kind of calling on our lives and we don't want the same thing anymore. And as I said, I'm trying to get this. Um, I'm really going to try to get this now shorter than we normally go. And yeah, what? Well, and she hates ice. Um, right. So I said she hates the prophets because look at this. She, she, she killed the prophets because why? Because it stood up against her. She's a controlling, she's a controlling spirit. How much of us have people because our children can say it like our children can say, you know, my mother, my mommy, my mother is very controlling. Or my father is very controlling, and then we call it controlling. But, but there, there, there's a, a thin line between you know discipline and all that, and being controlling. And the last thing we want to do is to be controlling to our children, and vice versa. Sometimes our children control us because. Because, you know, because we love them so much. They know that we love them so much. So they just, I only have water tonight, guys.
they know that we um, we love them so so sometimes and because of that we would do anything for them so they manipulate that a bit um, but we could look further let's look at um, let's look at Revelations 2 20 and if you I know this is a different kind of topic but if you are liking this topic so far uh, understanding what I'm saying or have any questions or anything like that just just feel free to ask me because there are obviously things that I might miss that might not come to memory at the time or um, whatever but if you you know if you're enjoying it so far give me a heart a like or um, something all right so what did I say revelations to sorry I'm in something else <clears throat> we had um, a session at <laughs> and so my voice is a little croaky today all right so actually let's go right down to 23 um because i want you know i just want us to understand a little bit more so we could go right down to 23 but it says nevertheless i have a few things against you because you allowed that woman jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants and commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. So we understand that basically that, you know, is what she used to do. And unfortunately, when Ahab got married to her, um, you know, he was a co-conspirator. And, and you have to realize too that the Jezebel spirit needs a Ahab spirit. And you you, you would look into, um, you realize that when you look into the church and you see certain, you know, things, you will see that they, they always have a, a left wing with them because they need that. Ahab spirit, that person that is going to stick for their control and stick for everything. So let's look at 21. And I gave her time to repent for her sexual immorality. And she did not repent because we know what happened to Jezebel. You know, um, we will probably look at what happened to her. But indeed, this is 22. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts. He said, you know, he's taught, um, uh, the most I know is talking. And he said, I will kill her children with death. Who are her children? Not, not her physical, but who are her children? Anybody that has the spirit of Jezebel. Anybody that has that controlling 
manipulative um, spirit that has that spirit of Jezebel are her children. And the Mosai says that he will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give each one of you according to your works. Right? He will, he will, because at the end of the day, we could say all kinds of things. And that's something that the pastor spoke of this morning. We could say all kinds of things. But at the end of the day, what happens? The Most High, He, um, he search our hearts. He search our hearts. And our hearts basically tell, tell the story. All right. And another thing that, 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 that Jezebel does is that she gets other people because she's so manipulative. She gets other people to do her dirty work so that she might look squeaky clean, just like how she got the, 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 the people to lie on Nebo because she wanted the land from Nebo for her husband. She got the people to lie. And then after the people lied and he was stoned to death, then um, Ahab, got the property and all that but the the you know your deeds don't come true unpunished because the word says you know if if the lord if your earthly father punishes you how much more will i you know punish you because for your um, disobedience, because when, when our children are disobedient, we, we punish them. And that's the same thing. You know, sometimes people say, oh, Lord, why are all these things always happening to me? Why are these things always? Because I remember the days when I used to say that too. Why are these things happening to me? But you got to look at your life. You got to look at your life. You got to look at your ancestors' life we talked about generational curses you gotta look at all those things you gotta look at your life and then your life will tell you why these things why all these things happening to you why you know why you going through these things you know thank you so much um and thank you once again for joining me and uh, we are dealing with the jezebel spirit today and um, we're talking about the characteristics and for those of you that now coming in, we're just talking about the characteristics and I hope that um, you will, uh, I hope that you will get something from what I'm saying. All right. And, um, Another thing is you have people in your life that you can see these traits in, because sometimes it might be a you too. So just don't point a finger at anybody. But, um, but another thing is to never take the blame for anything. Never take the blame for anything. There are a lot of people that you know, they know that, you know, what, they, what they're doing is saying, and it reminds me of, I'm not saying that, you know, this was the Jezebel spirit might remind me of, of Adam. But Adam said, the woman that you give me, Eve, she made me eat the fruit. She didn't make you do nothing. You know, people don't make you do nothing you don't want to do. But a lot of the time, they are so controlling. And you want to be up in the do. You want to be up between them that you will do a lot of what um, you might not want to do, but because you want to be between them and it, 
it seems cool and everything seems cool, you would just um, you would just do what they say. But the another trait for the Jezebel spirit is, and and I I said this earlier, domineering and controlling to others in the spiritual realm because I said she hit spiritual warfare but it's domineering and controlling to others in the spiritual realm because we know that everything happens in the spiritual realm before it even happens earthly because what did the Mosai say? He said he knew us before we were born. He knew us before we were even a thought. So I, as I said, I'm just going through all these things for us to check our own lives. For me to check my own life. Because sometimes when you hear certain things or you see certain things, you start thinking. You say, oh, Lord, I hope that I'm not like that. Or, you know, I hope that is not part of me. And I hope that. Um, what is what is being said today is of a blessing because because I don't I doing these things because I don't want my people to be casualties. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. And and I use I I say that all the time. I say that every time I'm here because I just want y'all to get it, you know. Because we we perish for the lack of knowledge. And I'm not saying that thing, but strive, strive to to yes, thank you. Strive to get that um, knowledge. Strive at least. You know, so that we can we can fly like eagles. So because we want our blessings, we want all these things. But you know what the Lord said to us? All we gotta be is obedient and do His will and do His work, and all these things will be added on to you. You know, all these things will be added on to you. So, so. I I don't you know I don't come here this is my only off night I could just stay in my bed and I could just relax but I don't come here every Sunday night for my health I come here because I have a desperate need I feel the need and I feel I I felt it years ago when I look back at things that I documented years ago. Um, I would even say from Barbados, but I don't have a lot of things from Barbados anymore on my papers and my books and stuff. But, but when I look back and I see, I realize I always had from 2017, 2018, I always had the urge to, to, to help people in this way, in this way, and and right now, I am doing it regardless. I'm doing it regardless, and you you would come up against um, um people that don't agree with you, or people that are objecting to you, but thank you so much for those scripture verses because. You know, well, I said this, but in the scripture verse of a lot of things that I'm saying, so that y'all can see it in the scripture verse. So I'm so appreciative to that because, and 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 I'm telling you, a person like like her, like Von Seda, I'm not saying that other people wouldn't be, but a person like that, that. Is so hungry and it's so thing and it's see see me here and now trying not trying because I'm doing I'm doing what I'm doing 
and it is there to help me will be blessed. She will be blessed so abundantly because the, the, the word says, and that's why I said I wanted us to do the blessings next week. If God spare or if he has spare because, and I know a lot of people get annoyed because I had this, I had this like months ago when I first, first started these lives and, uh, and then I stopped for a while because it had me so thing, but you know, of me using the word Yah and Yahuwah and, 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 um, Yahushai or me using those, um, those Hebrew words and those, and I, and the reason I use those words is because I did my history and from the time I, I started using those words, I personally, this is just me, but I personally started to feel closer, closer to the, it was like a light bulb came on and the scales, just like Paul, the scales came off of my eyes and I was able to see, you know, more clear and, and hence that is why, you know, I had to make certain changes in my life because the scales just came off and my eyes became open. I'm, I mean, I don't use like all the Hebrew names because I have a Bible there with all the Hebrew names and I don't, you know, but, but the, 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 the point I'm making is that it doesn't matter. What matters is the heart. What matters is the faith that we have in the most high. And a lot of people get annoyed. I mean, I had a session where, you know, and I think that I lost a friend because of that, a friend that I had for like 16 or 17 years. And, and I think that I lost a friend because of that, because and that is getting back to what we were talking about, the controlling spirit. People, when people feel that you shouldn't be doing something, you know, they, they want to control what you say, what you do, what you... But, you know, we are about that. We are not about that. Right now, we are about our father's business. We are about our father's business. And um, there are a lot of people, I know I grew up, I grew up in my own family with a lot of controllers in my life. And because I wanted to be loved, just like how they love other my other siblings or whatever, just because I wanted to be loved, I you know, I listened and I did a lot of what they wanted me to do. And then when I ended up, it was more disastrous for me than for anybody. Because at the end of the day, what your thing is, is to do what the Heavenly Father is telling you to do. That is the most important thing. Do what the Heavenly Father is telling you to do. What is he telling you to do? He's not going to go against his word. So if it is something that is going against his word, you know straight away there that that is not the Heavenly Father. And as I said, we deal with all kinds of things because I saw spiritual warfare firsthand in my life. Right? I had to end up doing impromptu deliverance prayers on people in my life because just out of the blue, the person started manifesting. And when they started manifesting, you gotta either you gotta either do what you're supposed to do 
right? Or just shrink back. But you got to let the enemy know who's in charge. And you know who's in charge? Not me or you. The Most High is in charge and the enemy knows that his time is short. So he is revving up his game. Right? And um, that was, you know, that was a lot I just said. But I feel passionate. I feel passionate about, about these things because I believe, I believe that, thank you for all those scripture verses. Thank you so much. Everything that I say was said and put in the scripture verses so that you know that what I'm saying is from the word. All right. So, and, um, and yes, so coming back to what we were saying, this domineering and controlling and, but they're controlling in the spiritual realm because we are, you know, we are dealing with spirits. That's who we're dealing with. That's who we're dealing with. And I can't reiterate this, um, more. And I hope that, uh, because I was thinking the same thing like this morning when I was at church, I said, you know, when I listen to, to my pastor preach the way how he preaches for just a handful of people, I said to myself, you know, if people could only hear this, if people could only be there to hear this. And that's the same way sometimes how I feel about, about, um, me, because I said, sometimes I wish that there were more people that could hear this and not only want to hear, you know, yeah, we all want health. And we definitely pray for health. We definitely want our health. But you, but prosperity comes when you do what he says to do. When he, he said that. He said it in his word. I didn't say. He said it. He said, you do what I have called you to do. And the prosperity will come. Because, yes, we all want money to, 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 to pay our bills, we want money to do this. We don't want to be living from paycheck to paycheck, you know. Um, but, but you do what you do because you have a calling for it, not because you want to be whatever they call them, if um, whatever they call them, but. But we do what we have to do because the at the end of the day, the Lord is our source. Oops. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. My thing just closed down. All right. Just let me find it again. I touch something and close it right now. All right. So we are back here. And all right. So you understand what I said with, um, you're trying to control the spiritual realm because if you could control the spiritual realm, you know, you have the physical realm because it starts there first. So and we talked about familiar spirits. So we know that the familiar spirits, the monitoring spirits and um, all those other uh, spirits that we talked about work hand in hand with Jezebel because at the end of the day, they're all friends. You know what the word says? The word says that 
then the it finds the host clean it will come back and bring a couple of friends with them so Jezebel was one of the main friends that comes back so when we talk about the spirit of infirmity we talk about generational curses we talk about all those things uh, the Jezebel spirit is right up there right up there controlling everything she is controlling everything she's pulling the strings because she is a master manipulator and a controller Jezebel has no respect for authority she has no respect for authority she pretends she pretends that she has respect for the authority to get where she has to get but when she gets where she has to get um, that authority goes out through the window because she's so crafty and she's so manipulative and, and so um, but just remember I'm saying she but just remember that the Jezebel spirit could be a man or a woman it has no thing because it, at the end of the day it is a spirit that is lingering on the earth so it could be man or woman and as I said the Jezebel spirit needs a Ahab spirit along with them. They need that person by their side to do, you know, the underhanded things sometimes. Um, and, okay. Uh, and another thing is that they always want recognition. They always want recognition. And how much people... In your church that you know I'm not saying that they might ha all have the Jezebel spirit but how much people in your church that you know that always likes recognition you know the word says that if you go to a function or you go to whatever don't just go don't just go up to the front because you think that you're all that all right you think that you're all that and a slice of bread so don't just go up to the front and say unless the um unless the person that is in charge say well come come you know have a, a a spirit of humility a spirit of humility a lot of us that when we think that we have something or we think that we get something or and i always said i always said this i remember saying this from the time i don't know from the time i probably was in my 20s or or, or something like that. I remember always saying, I said, Lord, you know, if I get a million dollars, please, please help it not to change me. Help me. Yes, you will change in certain ways, but help me to still be humble and, and just, you know, I, I don't I don't even know how to explain it to you but just help it to help me to be humble and I I I love the fact that you know I have one person in that can put the scripture verses for me because even if you don't hear what I'm saying or you don't want to listen to what I'm saying Von Seta is there to put the scripture verses there to what I'm saying you get attacked so much when you are doing this sort of thing when you are up front and you're doing this sort of thing you get attacked so much in every way but yes they always want recognition how much people you know you know in your church in your home in your business in your whatever 
that you know that always, always need to be the center of attention. I'm the type of person, I think that's why it took me. Um, yes, uh, true. And I think that that's why it took me so long to step out to do what the most I want me to do because I, uh, I'm the type of person that used to like to stay in my little small corner. I just, you know, go to church, I do what I think, and I stay in my little small corner and you never want much of that attention. I know in 2018, I will probably share certain clips with y'all in the future. But I remember in 2018, at the previous church that I was at, I did a whole production and it was a Christmas. Uh, that was my first year being there too. And it was like a Christmas production and... Um, you know, so it involved a play and dances and different things like that. And I stepped out there. I always have, you know, I always like doing things like that. I always think, even in Barbados at my other churches, I were I was involved in the you know, the drama team, the this, the that, and the next the third. And I always liked stuff like that. I stepped out 2018 with my other church and I did this, we did this play and it was called A Mother's Love. And it was a play that I wrote and, and it shows the love of a mother. And as I said, I might share the, the, the person that was recording it for me that uh, really upset me because it was a lot of hard work and he did not do a very good job of it. And he took like an hour and something production and made it into 15 minutes. And I don't know how he did that. So, but the point I'm making is that we all have certain gifts in us that we need to, um, we need to use for the kingdom. But a lot of time, um, but for me, I used to like, I, I, you know, I like sort of staying in my little small corner sometimes, but the Lord wanted me to step out and that's why it was so hard for me in the beginning to do these lives but isn't you know it's getting easier each time yes so very true on what <laughs> which part because i just said a mouthful you said so very true but <laughs> not sure uh, i'm not sure on which part you know, I, 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 I just enjoy, I just enjoy sometimes just the, the two of us being here because we're two or three gathered, he's in the midst. So we know that he's in the midst and there will be people that will, if they care to, they will watch it. Yes, okay, yes, so very true. It is, you know, it is. It's hard in the beginning. It's hard in the beginning to 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 step out of your comfort zone. But that's what people used to be telling me all the time. That you know you have a lot to say, and you need to step out of your comfort zone. I would say, but what do I have to say? But the life I lived, I am thankful. I am so thankful for all of what I went through. It was a hard. Um, a lot of things were hard, but I'm glad of what I went through because now I can share, now I can share that with other people that are willing to listen. And this has been um, at least two months straight because I know I just started that job. So at least two months straight that I was doing these lives, trying to do it consistently. 
And because I would do it, you know, haphazard because I never knew at the time when I was going to be off. But I'm trying to be consistent now. And, and I, and, you know, it's getting, it's getting better. It was hard for me at the beginning, stepping out of my comfort zone, because although, yes, I did the play, I did the play with my daughter as well, my daughter, because we made all, we, I made all the, the, the costumes, we did the, um, the props. Everything, 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 everything for the play, you know. So it was like totally impossible for me to do it myself. And not only me, but my friend Crystal that comes on of the on the live sometimes, but she is in Arizona. So like so she is like three hours behind. So although it might be eight thirty here is only like five thirty her time and you know, around that time, people doing all kinds of stuff. So, but she was heavily involved as well. And um, she really, she really was there for me with the play as well, along with my daughter and, and, you know, stuff. And a few, and, and at that time, you know, I got the whole church to come together and, did that whole production and it was and I only had we only had like seven or eight weeks to do it in because by the time we decided we only had like seven or eight weeks to do it in so a lot of the acting and different things might not be like perfect but but you get the gist of what it is you know and um Right. So as I said earlier, it they just, it works the same way as in a man or a woman, but is more prevalent in a woman. All right. So the in, um, intention is to travel. Yes. So this is another trait. The intention is to trample on anyone that gets in their way. How many people that you know are like that? People get these things under an hour. Is it me? Am I talking stupidness? If I'm talking a lot of stupidness, just tell me. Just be honest with me, please. But, um, yeah. But anyway, we are going to, we are going to speed up, speed up with it. Um, how many people do you know that... You get in their way when they, you know, they think they will trample you. They will trample. <laughs> okay, thank you. No, honestly, how many people um, that that will trample you in if you get in their way? All of these things are traits of the of the Jezebel spirit, and as I said. They tear down homes because it causes a lot of division in the homes. And, you know, this family member not speaking to that family member. And and this is what happens as well. You got to be a constantly in prayer for your family, your children, your team. Because the word says that, you know, the children are, the, the daughters are going to go against the mothers and the sons are going to go against the fathers and, you know, basically, we are going to go against um, one one another, right? But 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 we have to stay in control, stay in control. And I I always pray for clarity of mind because I find sometimes when you're so busy. Your mind gets so clouded. Um, it, 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 yeah, your mind just gets clouded. It's, it's, it's terrible. And, um, and I 
don't want to I want I want that's why I always would you would see that I would always pay for clarity of mind and and all those things because I don't want my mind to be clouded I want only I want to be filtered uh, only to say what the Holy Spirit wants me to say so when I said what I said earlier if I was talking foolishness I was just it was like just a joke it wasn't like serious because as long as the Holy Spirit is you know in the midst and speaking you know it would never be stupidness but I was it was just like a little joke you know because uh, people tell me I'm too serious people tell me I am too deep and I'm too serious I'm not funny enough and all those things and that's why you know I get a hard time when people wanting to watch me I guess right so they intention is to trample on anyone that gets in their way and then not only that she is prideful demanding manipulating ruthless and judgmental I mean all, we are all sinners we none of us are without sin and we know that none of us are without sin but how much people in, in your life you know you know that you could actually see certain things in them that you say oh, that that don't seem right that don't seem right at all